this is KV5R and today I'd like to show you my new teleprompter. First, we'll look at the table I built to mount on a tripod. Then, look at building the foam core version, then the acrylic version. And last, I'll show you the teleprompter software that I made for this project. I built this teleprompter for about $100, most of which is the beam splitter mirror. The rest is just a simple box made of black acrylic and Velcro. The box holds the webcam and mirror over a laptop screen. This is version 2. The first one was made of black foam core, but I just didn't like the way it looked, so I got an 18 by 24 inch sheet of acrylic and made another one. I designed the prompter to use my C920 HD webcam. The tripod table is a 12 by 18 inch poly cutting board with a 1 8 by 1 inch piece of aluminum flat bar mounted on it to make a strong connection to the tripod. I drilled the two end holes 5 30 seconds for a 10 24 tap and the five middle holes 7 30 seconds for a quarter by 20 tap. To tap holes nice and straight, release the coil spring on your drill press so the shaft can fall freely, then remove the drive belt and turn the pulley by hand. Aluminum can be hard to tap cleanly so work the tap back and forth frequently clearing the cuttings. And there's the flat bar mounted on the cutting board with the countersunk flathead 1024 screws. And there it is mounted on the tripod, making a nice table for the laptop and prompter. The 12 by 18 inch cutting board is a nearly perfect fit for the laptop. And note that you do need to put a little block or something under the lid to support the weight of the prompter assembly without straining your laptop hinges. Then I made the first prompter frame with foam core and velcro. The two sides were 9 inches square, which was a bit too large, and the top and back were 9 by 12 and a half inches wide, which was a bit too small. I put six pieces of velcro hooks on each side like this, and four pieces of velcro loops each on the back and top like this and four loop pieces on the edges of the mirror. Now to find the front of the mirror. This is the back side. You can see the gap. And if you put a mirror in backwards, you'll have a ghost image on the text. And this is the front side. No gap. I mark the front side with a permanent marker to make it easier to see when reassembling the teleprompter. And here's version 1 on the laptop. It works, but it just looks a little rough. A few days later, I received this piece of black acrylic. It's 18 by 24 inches and 1 8 of an inch thick. I made the first 8 and 3 quarter inch cut in this direction, then I made the second cut in the wrong direction. Then I went to the computer and made this, which I should have done first. It's so easy to make a wrong cut when that second piece is nearly square. You can see the two pieces on the right are the top and back, which should have been almost the same height. Then I remove the paper, sanded all those sharp edges down a little bit, and cut 12 little pieces of Velcro. And as before, put the Velcro on like this. Then I measured and drilled a hole for the camera mount. Note that at this point, you could jigsaw a large hole for your camcorder lens barrel or make any other arrangements needed for your particular camera. Then I mounted the webcam and stuck the back on. And nope, that gap just ain't gonna fly. It needs to be completely dark back there. So I cut the remaining scraps and used some good old packing tape. And it made a handy door flap that I can open to adjust the camera. Well, it would be all better if it was glued together without those little gaps made by the Velcro. But my idea was to assemble it with the Velcro so that it can be disassembled and slipped into a briefcase like this. Anyway, it's easy to put together. Align the corners of the mirror diagonally on one side, then add the second side, then carefully pick it up and set it upright. Next, stick the top on, starting with the front corners. Then roll it over onto its front side. Mount the camera on the back, nice and straight. Then just stick the back in place. You can then set it on the laptop frontwards like this, with the text flipped vertically, which makes the controls quite hard to use. 
or you can set it on the laptop backwards like this with the text flipped horizontally. The controls and mouse movements will be backwards, but at least they're upright. You can also use the prompter as a monitor by reducing the opacity of the prompter window with any of several free utilities. If you shine a lot of light right into it, you can see the camera, but notice that the text is still very readable. You can also see some ghosting from the back side of the glass, but normally you won't see any ghosting when using a proper teleprompter mirror and proper lighting. There are many ways to build a teleprompter, but the most important things are use a proper 70-30 mirror and completely black out the back side. Then practice, practice, practice. Next, I'll do a screen capture and show you my teleprompter software. This is JPrompter. I call it that because I wrote it in jQuery. It's just a browser application that will run in any modern web browser that supports HTML5 and CSS3. And as such, it will run in Windows, Mac, Linux, and any other device that will run Chrome, Safari, or Firefox. And it does not need a web server to run. It will run as a local file. It will not work properly with Internet Explorer. Looking at the screen, we see several settings and controls across the top, and below that, the scroller. Within the scroller, we see a scroll percentage indicator, and translucent yellow arrows, and crosshairs. In the settings, we have a font name field, a reverse checkbox which flips the prompter horizontally, an upside down checkbox which flips it vertically, an uppercase checkbox, a center checkbox, then we have five numeric fields which you can change manually or by pointing at them and rolling the mouse wheel. We have font size, line spacing, line padding, scroll speed, and pointer position. The reading speed is set with a combination of font size, line spacing, line width, and scrolling speed. The pointer field can be set so that the pointers and eye line appear in the center of the camera lens. Then we have several buttons. The HTML button opens the HTML editing box where you can directly edit the HTML in the script. You can also use it to copy and paste scripts to and from any text editor, and this is how you would normally load and save your scripts. You can also edit the script directly in the prompter. Simply select some text and click the bold, italic, or inverse buttons. To remove formatting, you can select the text and click the unformat button. There's a help button that opens a basic about and help box. The last three buttons run the prompter. Reverse, stop, and forward. You need to run the prompter in reverse when it's in the upside down mode. For quiet operations, these activate on hover, not click. While running, you can pause the scroll by pointing to the scroll percentage indicator. You can also run the script up and down with the mouse wheel in 20 pixel increments. This is useful when you need to redo a paragraph or you're reading a little behind or ahead of the eye line. When not running, the window scrolls normally, allowing you to quickly move within the script. To run full screen, just hit F11 and F11 again to exit full screen. To use with a mirror, you can use the reverse function and invert your monitor, either physically or with a video driver setting, or you can use the upside down function and leave the monitor upright, but other windows will appear upside down and be very hard to control. The best solution to the mirror problem is to use either hardware or software that will allow horizontal or vertical flipping of the whole screen. Note that that's not the same thing as rotation. So there you have it. If you like this video, please subscribe to Wagon One 
and please see the related and other articles on my website, kv5r.com. Thanks for watching.